Do you want to install macOS on an external hard drive? Whether you want to try the latest version of Mac or if you want to try one of the betas, this is the easiest way to get started. I'm going to take you on the process. Now, I recommend an SSD because they're fast, but you can use any external hard drive that you have. Hey, what's up? This is Paul Salt from the future. I have Sequoia installed on my SSD. And there's two things I want to call out before we get started. Uh, number one, at the very end, I'll have a troubleshooting section in case you have any issues. And number two, when you want to choose which version of macOS starts when you've got this SSD plugged in, you want to stick around for the end of the video to learn how to do that. All right, thanks for watching and let's dive right in. In this video, I'm going to show you the six steps that you need in order to install macOS on an SSD. We're going to be looking at macOS Sequoia. I actually don't have that on my main Mac right now just because some of the tools I use are not compatible or I'm afraid of breaking something that's working. And we're going to talk about the hard drives that you need. We're going to talk about using the correct USB port. There's a one port that this will fail on on newer Macs, and we're going to learn how to prep your hard drive, how to format it. Then we're going to install Mac OS on that external drive, and then we will finish the install on the other side. So let's take a look at getting started. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to download Mac OS, and we're going to jump on over and I'm going to walk you through this process. So let's go over and download Mac OS. Now I'm going to move this little slideshow up to the top so that you can follow along and we can look at everything in the center of the screen. So the first link that I have down below, if you click it, is going to be the Mr. Macintosh link. Now, as long as a website like this exists, we can get the full installer that you can use to install Mac OS. So we're going to scroll down and you're going to look for your platform. So there's Sequoia, Sonoma, Ventura. There's going to be new Mac versions. You can use the same thing uh, if you can find the full installer link. We're going to scroll down and you're going to see the updated links right here. And here we see the public full installer. Here we see the beta installer. So depending on the version you want, you can find the one that you want. Some of these are no longer signed and this will change into the future. So you're just going to have to go for the latest one that's going to work with your Mac. Now, when we're looking at this, there are a few here that are M4 only. I have an M3 Mac, so I can't install that one. I'm going to have to go for this one. So I'm going to click this, and we're going to start that download. So this is probably going to take a little bit unless you've got fiber. So for me, it looks like it's going to take seven minutes to finish this download. And so we'll wait for that as that continues. Now, the next important thing that we're going to work on is setting up our Mac. So let's talk about hard drives. When we're looking at Macs, we need a fast hard drive. And so I am going to recommend the Samsung T5. Now, this one you probably can't buy anymore um, unless you're getting it from eBay or, or some other reseller. Um, so you could probably get a T7, and that's going to change into the future. And then if you want the latest and greatest, you can get the, uh, this is the T9. Um, the downside of all of these different things, and I didn't realize this when I bought it, is I, I didn't need the faster one because it wasn't any faster than um, what my Mac can support, is that USB 3.2 hasn't been supported on Macs until M4 processors came out. And so all previous USBs were 3.1, which is a lower bandwidth. Now, Macs do have Thunderbolt, which is way faster, but Thunderbolt drives are more expensive. So if you're looking for a cheap, affordable way to connect your Mac, USB-C drives with 3.1 or 3.2 are probably going to be cheaper than a Thunderbolt drive, but you can get better performance with those Thunderbolt drives than you can with USB. All right, so I recommend Samsung T5 through T9, and that's going to constantly change over time. So that's our faster hard drive that we're going to need. And up next, we want to make sure that we're using the correct port. And I'm going to walk you through that process. So there is a DFU, which is a device firmware update port that you cannot use to do a secure or you cannot use to do a bootable drive installation. Afterwards, you can connect to any port. But when we're installing, we cannot use this port because it will not work. So if you have an Intel Mac, there's a T2 uh, 
um, security chip, and you may need to allow booting from external media. So keep that in mind if you have an Intel Mac and you're trying to follow along. I am on Apple Silicon with an M3 Max. So let's take a look at this guide that Apple has while we download so that I can walk you through the process. So the second link that you'll see underneath is the install macOS on an external storage device and use it as a startup disk. This is what we want to do in order to run on another machine. So we need to follow this first step and connect to your Mac. And we're gonna connect to a Mac with Apple Silicon or any other Mac. We're gonna follow it along here. Now with Apple Silicon, we need to make sure that we're not plugging into the DFU port. So how do we figure that out? We click on this link and this will tell you the DFU port locations. So I have Apple Silicon MacBook Pro and it looks like the new M4 chip has it in a different spot than the other models. So looking at my Mac now, I'm gonna look at the left side for mine. It says the leftmost USB port when you're facing the left side of the Mac. So the left side of my Mac, and then it's going to be the leftmost, which is gonna be the port in the back of my laptop. So that's the DFU port. I will not plug my my drive into there and I actually have my monitor plugged in there, so I can't. So I'm gonna be plugging on the right side of my MacBook Pro 14 inch and I will be totally a-okay. So look at this link if you need guidance on picking your port. So let's take that USB and let's plug it in. Okay, so once we plug it in, we are getting ready for the next step and we are going to prep the hard drive so i already have mac os beta installed here but i want to do a clean install and i'm going to see that the drive is now connected so under finder you should see that you have a hard drive it's going to have some kind of name we are going to open up disk utility now i'm going to use spotlight to find it so spotlight is going to be command space bar to open and, and hide and you can see this spotlight window has just appeared on my Mac. And I'm gonna search for disk utility, and then I should see it. I'm gonna press enter, that will open it up. You're gonna see your Mac internal hard drive. We do not wanna format this one or you will have a lot of problems. So make sure that when you're looking at this, you're looking at your external drive that you have plugged in. So if you have a Samsung portable SSD, you will see that in this list, you are just going to select that. Now, the fastest way to get a clean install is to just format. I don't care about security on this device since this will just be for demo purposes and for testing out the new operating system. So I am going to erase this disk. So I select it on the left and we are going to erase and then we're gonna have some options here. Now the options that we select are important. So we wanna make sure that we're doing the AFPS and with the GUID partition map. And here, I'm just gonna call this Mac OS Sequoia. Whichever version of Mac you're gonna install, just name it whatever is gonna be helpful for you. This is for me for testing new features on beta or um, upcoming releases when I'm not ready to transition. I'm not gonna go for encrypted right now since I don't really care. This is kind of just a, a development experimental install and this will probably be faster than the encrypted and won't cause headaches with that. And then make sure that you have the GUID partition map or GUID. I don't know how you want to say that. We're going to select that one. You might not see APFS if you've got the wrong scheme. I've had issues with this in the past. I think, yeah, if you're on the wrong, I don't know why this one's not the top. This should be top of the list if it's going to impact the other stuff. So just make sure that you select master boot record and go with the GUID partition map and then APFS. Now this is recommended if you are installing on an SSD, okay? So we're gonna hit erase and wait for that. That's going to unmount the disk. It's gonna create a new partition map. It's gonna do whatever it needs to do, get rid of everything so that there's gonna be um, no data associated with it. Now that doesn't mean the data is totally destroyed right now. Uh, we'd have to do a secure, um, format and I did not ask it to do that. So this will just be a, a sort of a quick way of doing it. I don't wanna sit here while it just randomly writes bits to each location on the SSD. 
All right, so you should see that this was successful. And if that's the case, you're gonna hit OK. And now we should see that we have a new um, media device that has no installer. And if you look here, we'll see that it is now blank. It doesn't have any of the old files. I've totally wiped them out. That's a way faster way to delete stuff on a disk if you have a ton of files. Okay, so now that we have that, we are downloading that installer. It is almost done right now. So we can see that it is four seconds away from completing. We're gonna go on to our next step. So we've got this install assistant package and we should just be able to run it. So this went to my downloads folder. So I'm just gonna to go to downloads here and you're gonna find it in your downloads folder or wherever you downloaded it and you're gonna double click on it. So when we do this, we'll go through the guide and what we should see is that it is going through all of the steps. So let's hit continue. And this just needs to put the Mac OS installer. So this is not actually going to install Mac OS. You put in your password here. And once we do this, um, we should see an install. I'm gonna keep this for right now, or you can you can just move this to the trash. If you're doing a, a clean install, that's totally fine. Okay, so now under applications, I actually don't have this in my list of, of things, but we should see an install option here. So right down here, we see install Mac OS Sequoia. So if you open up your applications folder, oh, this is really big. You're gonna look for install. So if I type I for install, that should take me down here-ish. So I've got a couple different I apps. And I'm just gonna double click on the Mac OS Sequoia. So double click Mac OS Sequoia. Once we do that, that will bring up the installer. Okay, for some reason it didn't come to the foreground, but now we can see it and we're gonna hit continue. We're gonna agree, we're gonna agree. And now if you have that SSD plugged in, you should see an extra little button here. Now, if you don't see that extra button, make sure that you're plugging this into the correct port. So remember, you have to not be on a DFU port on Apple Silicon, which is the device firmware update port, which is a special port when we're rebooting. So I'm gonna click on show all disks and we should see that newly formatted Mac OS Sequoia and we're gonna hit continue and it's gonna select an owner. This is gonna copy some settings over we still may need to set a user ID once we are doing the install, but this is copying something over that Mac OS needs. Um, and then if we hit install, uh, we'll get through that process. Now, before we do that, um, I'm going to have to record from my iPhone because as soon as I do this, it is going to take over my Mac. And so we won't be able to see the entire install process. So let's, go ahead and get ready to install. So we're gonna go through the install on my MacBook screen. It's gonna show all of this stuff on the screen, not any external displays. So I'm gonna focus on that for this video. And just make sure that you've closed all other apps. I had to go through this a second time. Um, so you'll see me speed this up, 30X. And it's just gonna, it's gonna be a little bit slow. I think it went faster than the estimated time because I'm working on an SSD. So that's a big benefit of using an SSD. It copies the files over faster. So we'll see that speed up and then it's going to want to restart. Now, just make sure that you've plugged in your power. I forgot to do this once I just switched the single thing and then it complained. So go ahead and plug that in and it may hang there for a little bit and then eventually it should start and restart. And again, I'll speed this up a little bit so you can sort of see what's going on. Um, now I walk through all the install process, get everything squared away. And it might take a little bit of time if you're syncing any iCloud stuff, but now you have Sequoia and it's on your external SSD. So you can use that there. 
Um, last but not least, I have one special section if you're having trouble. So stick around for that and how and learn how to um, switch startup disks at the very end of this video. Before we end, I, I need to talk about a couple more tips. Um, really important that you close all apps before updating. Sometimes you might get a corrupt uh, installer. Just restart your Mac. That should help. It might actually go into the install process if it had already triggered that. So just be mindful of that. You can always retry the process. You may need to reformat the hard drive and you can go ahead and do that. And lastly, there's the startup disk, which you can set in your settings on your Mac, your preferences. So you can choose which one is going to be the default when you've got it plugged in. And if you need to switch on Apple Silicon Maps, Max, you are going to hold the power button as you're turning the computer on. And that will allow you to choose. On other Macs, the, like the Intel Macs, you're gonna hold the option key and hit the power button and keep holding that option key until you see the startup disks. And then you can choose which disk you wanna start with, whether it's the internal or the external. Thanks so much for watching this. If you enjoyed this video, or if you learned something new or you got Mac set up so that you can test out some apps on an external drive, hit the like button and I will see you in another video. Thanks for watching.